All right, so back on the Chinook, the four-wheel drive conversion uh, Chinook. Hello. Um, let's pick up where we left off with uh, basically everything from the frame down, front and rear is now completed, painted, loctited, torqued, proper fasteners. Uh, there's a couple little things in the back I'm going to revisit that are temporary, I'll show you. But um, I think last time none of this was done or painted, if I remember. So now you can see we got bump stops, shocks, front drive line, uh, swapped out the shackles. I did lower the front a little bit, peeled the leaf out, peeled out two, and then it was way too low, so I slammed one back in, uh, brought it down, boomerang shackle, lowered it a tiny bit. It had straight five inch on it before. Now it's a boomerang four inch because I am kind of plan on. So spring settling, possibly lowering it another inch also. So that'll keep uh, boomerang shackle, keep my shackle angle happy, get full swing out of the suspension. And uh, anyways, that's where we're at with that. So all this stuff, see is locked in and done. And um, steering, so everything worked out with my ideas real well um, as far as like I didn't, you know, you don't know exactly if everything's gonna work till you put it together. But so far, killer steering angle, super happy. Double shears all locked in and torqued. Proper fasteners. I made this uh, hardened spacer there out of some uh, motorcycle um, wheel spacer material that's pre-hardened. It would happen to be perfect to have that laying around. I do a lot of bikes, dropper stuff too, uh, custom bikes. Um, steering box mounted. So this is uh, the heme joint, properly spaced. I haven't flexed it out, but I feel like, you know, an inch between the spring is and the steering is fine. We'll find out. Uh, around here we got steering box fully mounted, sleeved through the frame. Let me get some light on that. Uh, sleeved through the frame. The top sleeve is actually sitting proud of the frame, right on top. Got it all perfect. Angles look super happy. Um, the uh, rear slide under here. Uh, you can see I got the stabilizer welded on. Took the six bolt tube clamp. Cut the the mount they send you with little U bolts and a plate. Cut that. Welded it to the six point mount. That little uh, mount they send you with the U bolts is just total trash. It'll come loose no matter what. You'll bend the plate. It'll keep coming loose. It can interfere and bind the steering if it comes loose and gets jammed up in the high pinion or something. Uh, I mean, it's to me, it's a death trap. They shouldn't even sell those. But uh, anyways, uh, we got my nerdy little custom brake line adapters that I had made at my local hose shop. Braided stainless with nice fitting, so it goes from the banjo to the regular fitting there with the little sheet metal retainer I made. So everything's hooked up here. Um, it's a factory drive line, front drive line, I believe 2001 Forerunner, if I remember correctly. Could be Land Cruiser, they look identical. It, the single cardins look almost identical. One's just a tiny bit longer. So I got the longer of the two. Forget which one, I have a lot of drive lines. So, laying around. This cross members painted new mount for the transfer case. All proper fasteners. I punched out the factory mounts. I used the factory holes, punched them out bigger. Grade 8 hardware. Proper washers, nylock, nuts. I punched through the frame here um, on both sides with a plate in and out and then sandwiched this uh, essentially to give it extra support from over time from this peeling away, you know, getting any kind of leverage. So, yeah, that was just to lock it in. I feel like it was good insurance um, other things we got going on up here I think I swapped the oil pan to a solid axle sump and pan uh, also new hardware on there because the two-wheel drive has different bolts in the four-wheel drive lower anyways bunch of little crap brake lines are all hooked uh, lots of paint you know five cans of paint here under the hood we got I'll shine a light under there so you can see a little better. Steering shaft to the box hooked up. Um, this is a Tacoma 
shaft that I then shortened by like about 18 inches. Welded this end back on, ensuring there's just enough slip in those splines um, to get it on there and it's still fully engaged with the bolt locked in. Everything's proper, but it has just enough to slide it on there. Um, and you can see we got proper alignment and engagement of splines there too. This was really nice and convenient, but you wouldn't know till you tried. Where this pin is, all I did was die grind out the shaft coming off the column a little bit. Um, remove a little material, and then this fatter Tacoma pin slid right in there. It's 12 mil bolts. So it's essentially a Tacoma rag joint shaft shortened, re-welded. Got it to line up and slide right together with a little die grinding, a little paint, a little welding, no problem. I may be adding a bearing here after I drive it on the shaft here because the two-wheel drive has a tiny bit of movement. It might be fine. I'm going to drive it and find out. But I may be putting a pillow block bearing or some sort of a heme joint with a mount just to stabilize that shaft because two-wheel drive on it went right into a fixed box. Just completely different steering setup. So I'll drive it and see. Either way, it, it could be taken for a shakedown. Steering box here. You can see... There's a lot of plumbing going on in this corner, especially with this huge distributor. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to route and get in here, and it's I'm still going to zip tie it. And, but I got it routed kind of how I want. I'm still going to tuck and zip tie a bunch of stuff. But you can see it's plumbed in. I got a, So I used all the four-cylinder pump brackets, put a new idler bearing Koyo from the dealership, uh, idler bearing, new belts, painted everything. Um... All new hoses, except for this high pressure hose, is just a low mileage four cylinder. So it's a four cylinder pump and brackets, pulleys, with the four cylinder mini truck hose, four cylinder reservoir, plumbed into the uh, box for the um, Land Cruiser. So, and it all just lined up. There's no adapters for all the fittings, just fit. Um, I was stoked on that. Next thing we're gonna visit here that wasn't done, Booster um, and master cylinder, both FJ80, and I'll tell you the trick to this FJ80 one, uh, bolting on. I'll insert some pictures here. I put uh, the FJ80 one next to the two-wheel drive Hilux. They are identical length, height, hole in the firewall, mounting bolts, shaft length, clevis, except for flipped over. So essentially, this is an FJ80 booster that's flipped and literally bolted right on with the FJ Master. And you go, well, I don't know if that's legit. It's legit. Okay, we've been putting flipped, vacuum doesn't care if it's upside down. We've been putting flip boosters on old trucks uh, forever. You know, taking the newer Toyota ones, putting them on FJ40s, putting them on anything old. Um, and flipping them and they bolt right in, good to go. So it's actually a thing, it's, it's totally safe and fine. Um, and look at it, you can't even tell. I mean, the only thing different is the vacuum port down a little lower and this pivots, so you just pivot it up. Uh, we got the new clutch and master ran. Um, so we're running the stock Hilux, brand new Japanese master, bolted to an 84, 85, Slave cylinder, also ASN Japanese, trying to use the good stuff. Um, we got next coming up. Um, we'll get into the fuel system. I got a Japanese pump to replace this. Um, new mechanical, we got a 22 gallon poly fuel cell. Um, we are got lots of other smalls, but I mean, it's right there. Uh, let's jump into get my creeper. Here, slide underneath. Get to the underside of the trans, and so you can see the four cylinder trans is in there. Skid plate, cross member, everything's buttoned up. Uh, we got here drive line. Let's talk rear drive line. Uh, deep, 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 deep. So you can see here, we're just barely hanging on. This is the mocked up version kind of proof of concept you know my idea was to use a stock rear drive line and shorten the uh stock um first piece here uh which i did shortened it 
uh, triple drilled this flange and on the diff to accept all the patterns. So this is the two wheel drive pattern right now. When I actually have this cut and laser balance professionally from my South Bay driveline, I'm going to have him put the standard late model four wheel drive yoke on here uh, with the little bit bigger U joint. Um, and I will be, I got little spacers right in here, which are just mock up. I will be running a little bit taller spacer. Keep this short shaft right in line with the transmission. It's at a slight angle now. So this is all just mock up and for a test, test drive, test flex will be in my next video. Brand new stock, uh, Chinook or long bed, uh, Hilux, um, center support bearing. This is a stock FJ80 driveline. Obviously a bit short, but it bolts right in here. I put a slip yoke from the four-cylinder pickup truck. Slides right on there. Splines are the same. In fact, it has an extra inch of engagement over the Land Cruiser end. So this bolts right to there, which I triple drilled to accept the bolt pattern. So my deal here is, since I'm getting all this professionally redone, I just this is unbalanced anyways, this, um, I'm going to have them add a double card in onto this because um, it's a little short and the slight offset of the of the pumpkin. So the double card in will grow this in length and possibly fix any you know small vibration uh, issue we would have with the offset diff. It's not that offset. So I mean, look at this thing straight on. It's not that offset, but. Uh, Anyways, we're gonna we're gonna go for it. I want to do it one time, do it right. So, we got the rear shock mounts on. I got since I got the axle pretty much perfectly centered. It was just a little minor adjustment of everything to get the shocks to bolt to the top factory tower, which I was really wanted to do. Just keep it simple. Um, so what I did was run the All Pro extra long. I think they're for the front IFS eliminator for All Pro extra long shock mounts that got me right in line with the top mount so it literally angles happy bolts right in no binding killer um, so then we got uh, what else is under here oh we got all the lug nuts on that means we're getting close to driving it yay um, now let's get inside and I'll show you the uh, center console slash cross member and all the next parts I'm put throwing out this thing. So my next plan is, since brakes are plumbed, power steering is plumbed, everything's plumbed there, is to get, when I have time, I got a million other jobs going, but uh, get the um, everything bled and take it for a shakedown run with the temporary drive line. Just flex it out, you know, bleed the power steering, everything, check the brakes, and then... Uh, Finalize everything with the last last part. So let me I'm gonna turn the camera off for a second pull some parts out of the front show you the inside
So, all right, here we got, uh, I'll show you the inside. Uh, you don't want to see my ugly face, so I'll just, I'm all business here. I'm going to show you the good stuff. I know my editing sucks. My I don't have the catchy thumbnail clickbait shit. I don't want you to like, subscribe. I don't give a shit. I just want to put all this info out there, and uh, hopefully somebody takes something good away from it. Um, so I'm having the time of my life here. I mean, this is super fun, and seeing a lot of hacky builds. I've had to fix some hacky two-wheel drive conversions or four-wheel conversions, and uh, it's nice to do one from scratch and, you know, try and address all the issues I've seen. Um, I wish I could bang this thing out faster. I mean, I'm only doing three, four days at a time on it, um, and then I got to get back to regular ironworking jobs and, and you know, building custom motorcycles and doing, you know, trying to rebuild from the fire all, all you know, I mean, no rest for the wicked, but, uh, you know, I, I'm doing what I can do as fast as I can do it on here. And there's a lot of work and a lot of details that'll just eat you alive, you know. So let's just get into this stuff. Center console uh, done. I could use another coat of paint here. Let me see. There you go. Um, I'll insert some pictures shortly. Sorry. Uh, there you go. It is 8th inch, 10 gauge. Uh, so it's thicker than the standard sheet metal most people use. I wanted to add a bunch of rigidity. And there's a U-joint right here. So I don't want to, um, you know, I want a nice bomb protection. It's actually right here. Um, so this thing's rock solid, fully stitched to the floor. We're going to put some insulative material over it. Um, and uh, it came out killer. Four-wheel drive shifters shift perfect, no interference issues. Everything's bolted down. Definitely needs another coat of paint. Uh, got a slot on the other side. You can barely see for the seat slider because this is not actually symmetrical. I built it to the shape of the transmission, which is not symmetrical at all with the transfer case bulging out on one side. Um, to maximize space, I didn't want to just build it the same on both sides and burn three more inches of space. There's no space in here already. So it flares out a little more on this side. I cut a slot in there and plated it um, for the seat slider on the passenger side but overall I'm real happy with that once we get another coat of paint on it and uh, insulate it should be bomber uh, what else we got so bumper coming soon for sure it's gonna need some smash protection oh one last thing I didn't address power steering cooler uh, so I use cheap cheap guy secret um, I use the trans cooler universal from like Craig and O'Reilly AutoZone, one of those shitty places are the only places that have them in stock. And you shop by size, just go back there, pull a bunch off the shelf, find a little one. They're 35 bucks. I mean, if I would have bought a power steering cooler kit from online or something, they're 300 bucks, you know, it does the exact same thing. It's cheap to replace. You can buy them anywhere in the world. I mean, you can buy them at at uh, auto parts in Mexico. I mean, anywhere. They're cheap. Uh, I made a little rubberized chinga mount with a plate. I'm going to add another one, but I just needed a proof of concept. Get everything in there, plumb it, make sure it's not leaking before I fabricate a second mount. Uh, what else? I think that's on to the next parts here. Um, you can see here we got the Viair medium duty tank compressor gauge kit but we got the double gauge separate so we can actually control our airbags left to right up down independently so you can level the truck when you're going to sleep at night if you're on uneven ground you can get about probably six to eight inches of adjustment by dumping one airbag and pumping the other you can also account for varying loads whether your you know water tanks full on one side and you know it's not ballasted properly so you can control the level while you're driving also super handy uh, especially with an RV platform because you're going to run into varying loads of every kind, you know? Throw your dog, your girlfriend, a couple cases of beer back there. You're going to be rolling heavy. Can, so you can pump them up and, and uh, get her sitting right. So I uh, got all Japanese, you know, nice little pump here for the fuel. Airbags in here. I got to make custom brackets. This is the switch kit, I believe, for the dual switch kit. Anyways, I don't need to open that. You don't care. Uh, what else? I think that concludes most of the update for this. Oh, brake lines maybe. We'll just run through to the back. 
I have, yeah, zero prep on these videos. You know, I'm just throwing this shit out there. So I don't have a plan. I don't write notes. I don't take two takes. I just turn on the camera and ramble on for a while. So you can see I got this uh, e-brake hooked up. I took the factory brake lines um, from the FJ80, uh, rebent them so they go over the spring. I put on this little tab to retain it. Welded a tab on here to retain that part uh, all the way over the top, all the way over there, another retainer. Um, I left the short stubby rubber lines. They were not cracked, they were in good shape, but I went with the new braided everything custom ones in the front because I really wanted that front stopping power. The back is already so overkill uh, with disc brakes, you know, on a vehicle that weighs less than a Land Cruiser. Even loaded, this thing will probably weigh 1,500 pounds less than a stock Land Cruiser. I mean, it's not heavy. Uh, see, we've got uh, everything painted, but it'll need one more coat. This is just the coat of paint to keep it from rusting while it's sitting here. I will wipe everything down and paint it again right before uh, it goes home. Rear brake line's hooked up, e-brake, routed, dangling. I'm going to have to do a little work on making that factory Land Cruiser e-brake uh, end of it hooked to the factory handle and the forward cable that'll be a little custom job uh, so the next video will be a test drive test flex video i was hoping it would be this one but there's just so many details and we keep adding you know more and more things check this out Woo! motorcycle frame jig i just built powder coated anyways uh i'm a motorcycle nut too and um so the next one will be driving and flexing. I think that's it for today. Um, and then we'll probably talk to the owner on the next one who has been awesome to deal with. And uh, real, just the easiest you could hope for. And uh, really rolling with the punches on this. So we're almost there. Hope you enjoyed.